Previously on Silo, Season 1, Episode 4. Juliet is the sheriff, and she's on the case of George Wilkins. What did you think about the episode Silo, Season 1, Episode 5? Episode 5, I give it a 4 out of 10. I didn't really like this episode. Uh, I wasn't really interested in the investigation they were doing. I know, it's kind of uh, convoluted, kind of boring. Wasn't that interested. I want to know more about judicial. I want to know more about the outside. I want to know more about under the water. What did George Wilkins find down there? I want to know about the tunnel. I want to know about the hard drive. I want to know about the pact. So I want to know about all these things. Instead, we get investigation. So I didn't like it. Are we ignoring the ongoing problems in mechanical? I mean, they did one maintenance cycle, but it's still an ongoing problem. Are we just, are we okay with it now? And they lost their star player. Yeah. Uh, does, uh, doesn't the public have some questions about, um, Juliet dangling from the stairs? I mean, doesn't the rumor mill start with that? It's, I st we still got away for all these questions. We still don't understand how the silo works and we're focusing on investigation. Four out of 10. what do you think? I had a similar assessment. So I gave it a two out of 10. I'm harsh. <sighs> But we're seeing, like, there's, there's this universe, there's this world of everyone living underground inside this silo, this 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 IP that's, that's interesting and fascinating, and we're caught doing, like, police stuff. Like, okay, cool. There's lots of stuff that, that we're, we're not talking about that are super cool. Additionally, the mayor died. I really like the mayor. The mayor died. The secretary doesn't. I hate the secretary. Why is she still around? Like, it feels like good people are punished, and the secretary gets to live. Um, but I think, I think I'm getting a handle on the universe. I bet that... I assumed that judicial would be like justice department and everything would be called fair. I think judicial is short for adjudicators, in which case they're making decisions that is, I guess, aligned with their sense of justice. But it doesn't have this feeling as, as an American of like checks and balances between the different between the mayor and the sheriff and and the tech guy and judicial. They're all checking. I don't think that's what's going on in the silo. I think it's judicial is on top and everyone's beneath them. It's starting to feel like that. I agree. That being said, Judicial does all these like underhanded backdoor CIA stuff and a great place for them to hide bodies would be in that drill room with all that water. You just throw a body down there. It's gone forever. If Judicial was doing its job, they would know about that place. Maybe they do know about that place. They just save it for, they like want a public display of people dying. Maybe, maybe. actually, maybe, yeah. Actually, maybe, yeah. They, instead of having a body just disappear forever and people are like, oh, they disappear. Like, no, no, no. You have to have the body that remains so that people can bury something and you have to give them, give the, the, the people, the masses, a reason for this person disappearing, which is they killed themselves and fell off the stairs. Maybe the people they want to disappear, they don't dump them into the water using the route that Juliet and George used. Mm -hmm. They just have a chute and they just dump the body, Kobe. plummets into the water and then it's over. It's great. Okay. Okay. Maybe, 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 maybe. Kobe. <laughs> Let's talk about today's episode, <laughs> Silo, Season 1, Episode 5. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, Juliet opens this file about Wilkins by Deputy Sheriff Marnes. I think that's right. Deputy Sheriff Marnes. Well. She says, Juliet says it's unimportant, but let's take a look and see if that's true. Let's see, Sheriff Department interview transcript. Person interviewed, uh, Gloria Hildebrandt. Place of interview, L17, apartment 27. Duration, four to five minutes. Not 45 seconds. That's right. <laughs> no units. Units, people. <laughs> it's like, like <laughs> greetings. Where do you live? You live here? Okay, well, see you later. <laughs> 45 second interview. Uh, so let's see. This is a transcript. Relic, the watch. It's legal. I guess the watch is the watch that Juliet is currently wearing. I think so that's so. what we're talking about. I think so. He didn't ask you that, George. He asked where you got it. Where did he, where did George get the watch? Is it a gift? Who bought it for you? I bought it for me, myself. I don't have anyone else. I'm alone. Uh, he said, I bought for me, myself. <laughs> George panicked. His English skills just fell apart. <laughs> fell apart. Fell apart. Because he's, you know, he's getting interrogated. Mm. So... Yeah, the watch is under watch. Nice. And he bought it for me. Bought for me. Bought, bought for me. Hmm, look at that paper. Oh, yeah, yeah look at that paper. Nice paper. So Juliet said it's unimportant. Seems kind of important. She's yeah. still wearing the watch. 
take it off. It just brings too much attention. That's right. What is this again? She then pulls a, the paper out of Marn's body. She, like she sees the body in like the morgue, I guess, or or no, no, mm -hmm. it wasn't the morgue. It was there on the ground. She like mm -hmm. took the list out of, oh, out of his yeah. pocket, and yeah, this was the list of people that that Deputy Sheriff Marns was looking into when he died. Mm -hmm. I think it's a reasonable idea to like whoever he was looking into go look into them because he disappeared suddenly, like or he, mm -hmm. he died suddenly, like. What did he get on the trail of that somebody was like, no, 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 shut him down? Uh, let's take a look at this list. Uh, so F Frankie Brown, apparently his crime was moonshine, resulting in non-fatal poisoning of 12. Ooh. Woo, okay. Doris Kennedy stole and sold opiates. Oh, jeez. <laughs> they, <have laughs> they have underground farms going on. That's right. Wow. Uh, Charles Martin, series of apartment robberies. Wow, wow, I really misread that. I said series of apartment raspberries. I was like, dang. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes into apartments. <laughs> uh, Ralph Melby, gambler, thief, two minor assaults. Okay. Did he, you mean, is that, does that mean two fights that were not that bad or did he punch two kids? I'm going to say fights that were not that bad, but that's, that's I think sense. it's unclear. Uh, and then Wayne Gantry, domestic abuse. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. goddamn. Okay. So a list of potential perpetrators. I don't think we know anyone on the list. All right. So this, this is the speech that IT guy, his name is, let's take a look. Uh, I think he's Dr. Computer. Dr. Computer. I can't be Mr. right. Mr. Robot, I maybe. I can't be right. <laughs> His name is Bernard, Bernard. The, RT, the IT leader. So Bernard, the IT leader, is giving a speech at the, the funeral of the mayor and Deputy Sheriff Marnes. And great touching speech and everything, but what I want to focus on is he talks about the database and he talks about the total population of the silo. Let's listen. I ran a program to create a data set of silo residents under the age of... 46, giving a total of 5,496 silo residents out of the current population of 10,112. I ran a pro. So 10,112. So there's about 10K people in the silo. Okay. Also, he created a data set so they have information about everybody in the silo. Mm. Is that right? Yeah, sounds right. Okay. So we had talked previously on previous episodes about um, what kind of lookup capability that they have right. and like how, what kind of records they keep. Is it sloppy? Is it falling apart? Or is it actually really good? It's an indicator that maybe it's pretty good. It's pretty good. good census data. Yeah. And he didn't have to like, he wasn't like, I requisitioned the data department and it got, came back in a week. It seems like he just looked it up. Like the numbers are easily available. Right. Which suggests like well-maintained database of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll keep an eye on the database and the lookups and the terminals and see how this actually works. Uh, so this is a similar picture from mm -hmm. the funeral. Mm -hmm. I'm I wanted to focus on the the necklace. Maybe is that a necklace? Is there a is there a word for a big ass fatty necklace? Uh, there's the one that Flavor Flav has with the big clock. Yeah, 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 and yeah. There's, there's that other one that that. Um... Wharf wares, like the big old metal thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what's this like blingified necklace, like pay attention to me thing called? No idea. No idea. No the necklace I'm picturing like, dude, not like, it's like fucking I'm the man. Yeah, yeah. Like this guy, gigantic <laughs> gold chains. Or... Yeah. yeah. So, and I notice that the, the necklace has the little um, symbol of the people holding hands together in a circle. Ah. So that's so cool. may maybe this is the symbol for the mayor. Because mm -hmm. at this point in time, he's acting mayor. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, that makes sense. And then this, the armband, the non-suspicious armband, looks like that's a tree. I think that's the tree. So that's agricultural. Mm. Also green. Mm. So they're in the agricultural department right now. And he's the acting mayor. That's right. Who gets to wear these armbands? So it's, Juliet, it's, not, it's not everyone. Juliet. And then this, this guy. guy. 
who is this guy? Let's keep an eye out for in future episodes of who this guy is. Look at this, looking right at us. He's yeah. like, we yeah. got you. Yeah. Don't you don't you fucking do he's shit. actually he's actually the guy that's that's running the silo. That's right. He gets an armband because okay. he is in the shadows somehow, but mm. not mm. a baller. Mm. Um, the, the the sheriff who did not Billings. become sheriff, Paul Billings. Paul Billings. I do not think he has a. It doesn't look like it. An armband, and this guy now does not. This. Yeah, none of yeah. them. So it looks like only leadership gets an armband. Okay, so maybe he's like head of forestry division. Ah, he could be. And then she, yeah. and Juliet's the head of, of sheriff. sheriff. And so like symbolically all the heads of the department wear it. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm on board. Ah, so they buried Deputy Marnes and Mayor Johns together because they were trying to think about how to do this work properly. Uh, this is good. You put the bodies back into the earth, which refertilizes the soil. Makes sense. Sure. Uh, but why waste so many apples? You know, I thought about it. I thought about that as well. It's like, like they are wasting because it's perfectly good nutrients that could be going into people. But the silo is a closed environment. Like they're not getting nutrients from anywhere. Um, and like whether the the apple goes through a person or it goes directly into the ground, like it's the same nutrients that are going to be recycled. And so perhaps for them, I mean, I guess so. The symbolism of like mm -hmm. like rebirth or something like that is okay. Right. It also implies abundance, maybe think so that you know they just kind of can grow a surplus so it's you know nutrients in the ground versus nutrients in the apples it's okay and it's, there's so much abundance i'm seeing variety i'm seeing apples pears and and peaches peaches maybe oh maybe maybe is that a plum wait are, that's a plum that's are plum. these all the same season fruits oh i see so this might Have be a think, pear i think that's a pear and this is peach peach that's a plum plum apple and apple. apple okay Okay. And so it sounds like the forestry division, the agriculture division, they're kicking ass. They're kicking ass, <laughs> yeah. They gotta, have, they gotta have all these fruits ready at a moment's notice. When, like, what if somebody dies during winter? Like, no, we got fruits we're ready to throw. Mm -hmm. That's right. That means they have their light situation, their water situation, their dirt and fertilizer situation. Dialed in. Dialed in. Whew unappreciated unappreciated super important for society yeah. so this is juliet walking somewhere i forget exactly what part of the episode i wanted to point out look how clean oh yeah it is yeah look I, i'm looking down here there's no maybe a little bit of dust but like it's well swept no garbage you know right you know this i see some sheen on the floor i mean maybe i don't want to eat it off of it but i'm also not feeling like oh i don't want to walk here it's grimy like yeah. It was pretty okay. That's yeah, was pretty okay. Yeah. So the janitor's on it. That's right. Custodial staff, get on it. That's right. And that means there's like no degradation in the morale of silo workers. Because they're like, I want to do a good job. I want to make sure this place is looking spick and span. That's right. That means they like care about the community and they want to make it nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is a good sign for silo cohesion. Hmm. Juliet finds the sketching, or the drawing that marns drew of john's and also not in here she also finds the rat poisoning um, that's in this apartment do not ingest no mice yeah hmm. so this was implied that it was planted evidence because of this corner i think the corner was left in deputy marns's apartment and so then it was brought over to this apartment <laughs> oh i see as evidence same with this hmm uh because like why else would that be there it's kind of i mean interesting i had thought that it was some type of jealous love or something something like ripped it off the wall um it wasn't clear to me that it was a planted evidence thing until later on when they said it was planted evidence oh yeah i was i actually didn't have any idea i was kind of confused i was like why is this drawing here <laughs> yeah but clearly rat poison good labeling Mm. Mm. definitely not, not a carrot <laughs> definitely not a carrot with little feet and ears and a, that's right yeah, that's right that's right <laughs> that's a rat <laughs> the syndrome mm. so we've got some like you know sci-fi disease let's watch i've been
been down on 62. And she saw his hand. He's got the syndrome. So I thought the syndrome, I thought he was doing Morse code to her. Like, I didn't realize that that was like a medical condition. Um, okay, I mean, if it is, but sure. I've been down on 60. I also had the same thought until she said the syndrome. I was like, she was, he was telling her something with the tapping. Hmm. But, hmm. so I wonder what this is. This uh, shaking is how it manifests. Do you think it's like a disease that we have today? Or is it something that's happening just because the silo has mold or pollution or something that's right so it, it certainly could be mold pollution it also could just be the psychological effects of being trapped in a, a tube with everyone mm -hmm. i think if i recall there's like some type of like nerve damage that humans acquire when they eat the brains of other humans mm -hmm. um or maybe it's, it's it's cannibalism in general so this this also could be an effect of that um i mean oh. not, not saying not saying that he's like harvesting bodies but like they are harvesting nutrients from their dead like we saw see a mars we saw mm -hmm. mars and gems like they're they're in the ground like i don't know maybe or judicial slowly poisoning people by feeding them people good grief yeah we don't know what happens between people dying and like they go to the cafeteria and get food from something like that's right so this guy is a troublemaker who just was like we're gonna slowly wither him away well, maybe the bits maybe, and pieces of other people. Maybe they're having. Maybe it's not dark and crazy like this. <laughs> maybe maybe they're just eating cows, but like the cows have mad cow disease and they don't know about it. Uh, okay, that could be yeah. interesting. I guess we'll learn more about that coming up. Mm. This is the interior of. I guess this is Sims's office, right? I think this is Sims' office. Pimped out. Look at this. Oh, nice filing cabinet fan all mm -hmm. shiny mm -hmm. nice lights look at this interior In coloring mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. super clean clean i mean like he it looks like there's a janitor that's assigned to his office it's like pristine everywhere everywhere plus and he gets this like the cool leather jacket cool jacket he's got from like the top leather worker of the mm -hmm. the silo god damn judicial judicial and this guy's posture god damn Mm. yeah so this is another indicator that judicial has a ton of power they can pull in resources and pull in the nice things and the luxury items and make use of them in their office they so. get the nice things the mayor gets okay stuff the down deep just whatever junk falls whatever. to you that's right and if the silo doesn't keep running everybody dies doesn't matter treat the down deep as shit shit yep as long as i don't notice i don't care Mm -hmm. which means we've talked about this why doesn't the down deep use its political power use those levers of political power to get shit down to them resources that's right respect that's right all of it that's right they could take judicial down to its knees it's it's knees it's knees yeah but actually yeah right? they could just shut off power for like 20 minutes a day and be like that's right. this is the best we got and, you know we're so hungry down here we need higher quality food and i wonder if they are the only ones who know how the breakers work so they could preferentially turn off power <clears throat> to different departments <clears throat> like i don't like judicial today <clears throat> oh he's gonna she's trying to watch a movie with his cutie pie girlfriend <clears throat> oh they're oh they're they're trying to spy on the down deep <clears throat> <clears throat> now you're spying at blank screens that's right so the down deep is now being ignored we complained about that in the review uh this is another example they can really leverage their power here instead totally taking advantage of instead yeah, judicial gets the nice stuff you just got nice stuff leather jacket cleanliness. actually there's not even like any sign of concrete wear which we've seen around the That's silo right. lots of other places there's cracks and stuff rebar exposed here look at this pristine wall pristine that means if there was cracking somebody came in and patched it that's right and this got priority god damn judicial sims what's going on So this part, I was noticing uh, they manufacture paint. This guy's painting. That's right. Um, and he's also kind of wasting it a little bit. He's got some splotches on yeah. his pants and some overflow here. Which, which sounds like it's not like a, it's not even a scarce resource. He's he's mm -hmm. able to be sloppy. Mm -hmm. And he's just kind of you know if it drips or whatever, I don't care. Mm. 
So they're able to manufacture the paint in vast quantities so that this guy can be sloppy with it. Hmm. Uh, okay. I don't know what else to say other than Silo's got it going on sometimes with their manufacturing. So they make things pretty with the nice paint, but there's also like structural problems going down. Right. <laughs> all right all right <laughs> yeah yeah sure it happens i wonder where they get the pigments i wonder if they have like the one this one pigment this like peach sort of pigment i wonder if that's all they got <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i wonder the chase so what is this this is juliet goes to the the wrong apartment which the judicial guy thought was the right apartment and she knew that he was going to go to the wrong apartment but she shows up tells him it's the wrong apartment gets him and then that dude chases her oh no he takes off to escape she has to chase him that's right that's right he takes off to escape she chases him so let's watch this chase it's pretty cool oh and keep in mind they're also doing the race up the spiral staircase in the meantime so this is there's a lot going on here let's watch off he goes got my way Oof. Unnecessary. Uh, she's the sheriff. You watch out. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. So they get to the stairs. The race is coming up, and they're going down. Here we go. Okay. 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 Huh? Here come the racers. Oof. Not so gentle. Oof. I thought she was toast. I thought she was toast. Like, how do you get out of this? Like, why isn't he just kicking her hand? Kick her fingers. Let's kick it, yeah. Stomp, elbow elbow. stomp. Yep, elbow blash. <laughs> then he, he disappeared. He, like, ran. He ran and <laughs> nobody not saw it. Yeah. These two fine young women help them, help and, and then, then they, they, take, they take off. <laughs> Actually, they may be runners that are just behind the lead group, now that I think about it. Oh, maybe. Yeah, so maybe. They, they continue their race. They just took the time out of their race to help her. They're like, then, we're not winning. We're doing this for fun. Like, let's, yeah. save, let's save this person. Let's get, back, get back on the race. Are you injured? I don't even, I'm not even going to ask. I'm going to continue. <laughs> Silly goose. Why are you hanging out here? So I thought about, like, like the, the risk of, like, punching at her hands is if she moves her hands, then you hit the bar, and now your hand's messed up. So what should what 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 should the guy have to give her a wet willy? Like honestly, like someone wet willies you while you're trying to hold on to a bar, you're like ah, like ah, get out of here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess he could kick her hands. Sure, or even just slap her face around. Like you're you're like holding on to your dear life. You're just trying to defend, and then you're making your hand weak. That's right. But I did like I did like that she's super strong. I did not expect that, but she's been working her whole life in mechanical. Right. Like she would have this grip strength that's super strong. Mm -hmm. That's right. Plus, it's. I think she could probably do a pull up, but she's got this like lip here. Oh yeah. It's like ruining Weird her leverage. Torquey yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But she's holding on suicide grip. Inappropriate for the staircase, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it's called. That's, that's what it's called. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. So and then she breaks his finger. Oh, no, which is he's, amazing because he is, didn't just lift his finger off like that's right so she breaks his finger and then he just says i'm gone yeah he's like peace out yep <laughs> wow mm. so scary i also like that sh i mean i thought i thought like no way that's kind of that's kind of ridiculous you can break someone's finger like that mm -hmm. but she is the mechanical person like she's been working with her hands her whole life that's like, right. i bet she has excellent strength so she was holding herself up with one arm and just and then was able to do that. So holding, you know, you can't pull yourself up with, a lot of people can't do that. Yeah, it's like quite a few people can do that. Right. But you can, a lot of people can hold themselves. So that makes sense. That's right. That's right. A lot going on in that chase. Mm. I also noticed they like ran in the middle of the staircase. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this in a previous episode where like, should you go up on the outer radius and down on the inner radius? Like what is the best option for here? I could imagine if you're on the outer radius, you can get, you can run faster. You run faster, you can like hug the wall, you can maximum speed. Mm -hmm. The other side of it is you can like go on the inside radius and do like tiny little fast steps. Mm -hmm. What gets you down the staircase fastest? So I think outside's no go. I think that's the slowest. Even if you're sprinting as fast as you can, 
you might you probably gonna lose control of your body i think very, very possible yeah. uh i was thinking about this this railing on the middle okay this railing wonder if it's the inside radius is definitely the least amount of distance because circles mm -hmm. um but i think if you just straight run down the middle you're gonna you're gonna go get too much speed and basically fall over high probability of like tripping and now you're tumbling down the stairs but you have this rail this handrail maybe you could some do some kind of swingy business oh. down where you're kind of got you've got control the whole way so it's like feet hands feet hands or like feet, leapfrog hands. leapfrog leapfrog yeah. so that way your your hand your feet are just moving you down mm -hmm. but a lot of the balance a lot of control is your hands you're holding right. onto the railing right and i wonder if you get some practice going down you could figure out like the optimal way to do that hmm. um but i think they haven't practiced it right yeah i mean why would they so they're going safe route down the middle mm. split the difference okay okay it's not steep but they're not they're trying to optimize by not going long distance around the outside i guess the optimal way is to wall run like you don't even use the steps you like you like run sideways <laughs> along the edge here. That's like, video game it. Yeah, yeah. You, you Sonic Adventure it. <laughs> you just run the inside wall. Yeah, you, like, you get it on the ground. You do a little spin, and then pew, right on the outside. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, get one of those inflatable like uh, plastic balls. You know, you <laughs> so dangerous! Just kick it down the stairs. <laughs> the, 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 the ball, the the midpoint of the ball is higher than the railing. You're, 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 you're gonna guaranteed bounce off, going yeah. off. Okay, bobsled. A bobsled would do it. I see a, a sleigh might do it, yeah. That's actually, that's not bad. Not bad. Actually, what is it? Not a not a bobsled, a toboggan. What's the difference? You know, a tobog toboggan. 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 This uh, thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's got this, uh, let's see here. Like this one I was always thinking of. Ah. And it's that would be easy for the people in... $600?! what northern toboggan company okay but this 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 lippy this wait lip. no 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 should we start a toboggan company <laughs> yeah, like, what, the what, what are we doing <laughs> what the heck wow okay okay but <laughs> <laughs> this this lip right so you got the uh, stairs it's oh, you, it's gonna okay, okay. keep you going smooth mm -hmm. versus like a bobsled i think is like more like skating on ice yeah you have these sharp blades yeah yeah Six hundred dollars? Six hundred dollars? For this? I mean, th this finely crafted material that Northern Toboggan Company has clearly <laughs> put in their research to make high quality <laughs> products. Uh, <laughs> please, please sponsor us. But God damn, six hundred dollars. Six hundred. Okay. 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 All right. Silo section thirty one. Let's listen to Sims talk about it. That door I came out of, the first time I saw it, my father showed it to me. He was a janitor. People looked down on him, on our family. We all know the philosophy of the pack. Everyone contributes to the survival of the silo, but a janitor is still a janitor. When I was 14, I got into a conflict with one of my classmates, Richard Elliott. One day I get to school and Richard Elliott is crying. Seems his father's been reassigned to a job on 125 and they have to move, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. So my issue with this was everybody's like, uh, Sims's dad is a janitor. And then all of a sudden, this this other kid who had an issue with Sims is shuffled off to a different place. Um, wouldn't the fun. rumor mill start of like, how did that issue get taken care of by a lowly janitor? Heck, I mean, even if they didn't know that it was connected to the lonely janitor, the, the kids family would be like why did we get moved here like it seems like the person that we don't our job isn't needed here like why, why did we get moved and then like you know when you get like offended by someone you start like rapidly pulling in new ideas and like speculating on what happened wrong mm -hmm. i think that rumor exactly you said that rumor mill would churn that rumor mill would churn because mm -hmm. like that kid's family would be start asking other people but like what happened do you know what happened why did we get moved like why did our lives go mm -hmm. from upper mids to deep to like the top of the deep down mm -hmm. like what the heck i think that would churn and people would eventually figure out like uh it's like sims his dad had something to do with it mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, I just couldn't imagine people not talking. That's right. So was it a good move for Sims's dad to exercise his power for a minor bullying problem in school? Well, I guess I guess the issue is the way they did it. Like if yeah. Sims's dad had just made the kid fall off the staircase, then problem solved and the family doesn't get disrupted. Right. And so no questions are asked. Yeah, so... Very interesting. Somehow, the Section 31, the janitor's closet, whatever you want to call it, of the silo, is able to exercise power in this way, but not get found out. That's right. Uh, maybe rumors do swirl, but nobody can put a finger on, like, what happened. And to tie this to what we said earlier, that there's like 10,000-ish people, like, I can imagine if people disappear in a population of a billion, like, you're not going to notice, it's a billion people. But when you have these like small-ish, small town-sized communities, like people will hear about stuff. People will say stuff. Like okay. there's enough networking on going on mm -hmm. that the rumor mill is enough to cover mm -hmm. everyone. So so peculiar that that in this small population, judicial feels very comfortable just making things happen, whatever they want. Right. And is is judicial and janitor's closet, are they the same? That's a good point. Maybe they're kind of connected in a way, but it seems like maybe they're different. Seems like judicial is what the public knows about, but then there's a real secret person behind the scenes that's pulling the strings. So in Starfleet, there is Starfleet intelligence, which would be analogous to judicial. Mm -hmm. And Section 31, which nobody knows about, is analogous to the janitor's closet. Right. They just handle things that need to be done, that is ugly, that's not supposed to be seen, but mm -hmm. needs to happen, so you do it quietly. Right. And they're super good at it because nobody knows. You know what else Sims doesn't know? His dad wasn't a janitor. His dad was a custodian. <laughs> right? I mean, janitors live off site, come mm -hmm. in to clean, leave. Robert, everyone in the silo lives in the silo. Therefore, the dad must have been a custodian. Wait, that's the difference? I, I think I think so. That actually makes <laughs> I, sense. I, I've given now said the it word. very assertively. <laughs> that sounds so reasonable because a custodian is like you're taking care of a place, whereas a janitor is like you clean, you're you clean and you're out. That makes a lot of sense. So they're all custodians because they're custodians of the silo. That's right. But since here, he's like, my dad's a janitor. Like, you weren't listening to your dad. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you also disagree. But like, no, give him the proper guy. He's a custodian. That's right. In fact, we have decided that in the silo, custodians, janitors, people who are cleaning are not just, oh, you're a cleaner. It's like critical job. You got mold, waste, grime, like all of these things could adversely affect all kinds of life support systems in the right. silo. If, if you get a trash bin that's sitting around too long and sitting around mm -hmm. dirty, could you develop some type of bacteria, some that makes people sick? Mm -hmm. And now if they're sick, if that's like some type of infection that spreads, like mm -hmm. you have a major like health crisis on hand. Mm -hmm. So like the judicial says that they're super powerful, they're important, they're the ones that make the silo work, but actually everyone makes the silo work. Right. And like everyone should be appreciated for for their roles, and and the custodial staff are severely underappreciated. I mean, severely. Because think about in the modern day, if you get black mold in your house, typically you move, and sometimes it's condemned, destroyed, and brought back up, rebuilt. Right. right. You don't have that option in the silo. You just cannot have these problems. I mean, I mean, what do you do with black mold if you don't destroy the whole house? You like you still rip out that chunk of the house, That's right? That's and right. that mold gets sent somewhere. I, I actually don't know. But in the silo, where would you send that? Like, right. all the solutions have to be contained in the silo. Right. And if it's like in the ventilation system or if it's in some sort of inconvenient location, Ooh. it can be such a pain in the ass. The ventilation system, not only a pain in the ass, but if it spreads around to everyone's <sighs> lungs, like you could rapidly get some bad stuff dispersed. Mm. So maybe... So this is more in line with... So the me mechanical people... Super important, disrespected. Janitors, super important, disrespected. What the fuck's going on here, Silo? On. Okay. As a follow-on to this, listen to who the most important job is in the Silo. If I went through that door, I could never tell anyone what was on the other side. They might think that I was nothing more than a bookkeeper or a janitor. Janitor. But I would know the truth, that the people behind that door do the most important work silo work that keeps 10,000 people alive so when I heard uh, Sims say this I was like are they farmers behind the janitor's door 
That's right, because the farmers <laughs> the farmers are feeding everyone. They're, they're feeding everyone. They're keeping everyone alive. <laughs> they're literally keeping everybody alive with food. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, are, are they doctors? <laughs> like that's also <laughs> keeping everyone alive. <laughs> like what? The, like what the heck did they do? That's the thing. Important work like, at door. Do the most important work of the silo. Work that keeps ten thousand people alive. I mean, there's some kind of maybe internal spy police force thing, but there's no way they're more important than farmers or doctors or mechanical. No way. No way. Because mechanical, you need the power so that everyone lives. <laughs> doctors, you need people to take care of people so that everyone lives. Farmers, you need to make food so that everyone lives. And you're, you're sitting like, I've got the important job. <laughs> i got the important Me. job. Me. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, I do so, the shadow work okay. behind the scenes <laughs> and I make people disappear. Me. <laughs> I do it. Me and my dad. <laughs> my 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 school. In my school, I had a bully. My dad my made bully. him go away. Now I'm, I'm the, the most, most important. important. I'm it's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Sims. Okay, Sims. Okay. Oh yeah, so this is a picture, a janitorial closet. Right next to the electric meters. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Actually, so like, it, it doesn't look like there's a people. So every once in a while, you might exit at the same time as the electrical person comes out. <laughs> it's a wild oh, rest yeah. there. It's like, it's like, yeah, I'm just checking the meters. Oh, oh, it's oh hey, hey, neighbor. Oh, hey, Sims. Oh, uh, you're what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sir. Like, oh, this is a judicial... <laughs> But the door says janitorial. <laughs> like, shh, shh, go to sleep. Let me tell you this story. Over. Let's go on the catwalk. <laughs> Let's go to the staircase right now. Well, do you do everything you can for the silo? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, Sims. Okay, Sims. Okay. <laughs> okay, rumors of conspiracy theories were injudicial with judge, the judicial judge. I don't know her name yet. I don't know. They keep mentioning her name. She's important. Okay. So we have this investigation. Let's listen to the politics and the conspiracy and the rumors. Douglas Trumbull killed Mary Johns and Deputy Martins, and he wanted to frame Patrick Kennedy for the murders. So when I confronted Trumbull about planning evidence in an apartment no longer occupied by Kennedy, he ran. Last night, knowing his arrest was inevitable, Trumbull took his own life. You don't know why a seven-year employee of Judicial would want to murder the mayor in Mons. No, but we I didn't work closely with Trumbull, but I saw no sign of it. I don't know, we're, we're gonna look into it. Don't spend any more time on it. We have the killer of Mayor Johnson, Deputy Mons, and he's dead. This should quell the rumors and conspiracy theories. Sims looks so pissed off. He's like, <laughs> look at that face. <laughs> I, it was such a convoluted story, and then the judge was like, why would a, an employee seven in seven years in Judicial do this? And they're like, uh. I mean, and Julia's like, I don't know. I've just started this job. Like, <laughs> what? <do> you, <laughs> there's lots of people. There's lots of reasons why people are disgruntled. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I just started. It's like my third yeah. day in the job. Yeah. And I've almost solved this already. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let me look into it. No. Shh. Sh 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 also, how is that going to quell rumors? Some dude who from judicial who is has career ambitions suddenly kills people and then kills himself rumors gonna start right right right, right. i don't know if that's gonna shut the rumors and conspiracies down i mean in fact it makes it worse because it spreads the network of like number of people uh, disappearing yeah and then it people does. will be like hmm, hmm let's draw a venn diagram <laughs> let's let's do a, like a brainstorm web mm -hmm. thing and just connect people but we haven't taken into account sims would go around and be like shh, shh, shh. i was picked on as a kid let me tell you the story over here. <laughs> you see this leather jacket? Shh! Shut the fuck up! Oh yeah, you're not shutting the fuck up? Push you over the ledge! But he was my... He was my friend! Shh! My dad was a janitor. <laughs> my dad was a janitor! <laughs> not a bookkeeper, you fuckers! And the person's like, actually, your dad was a custodian. Ooh, you don't even know your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Sims is just rampaging around the silo. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Oh, science guy. Random science guy who has a crush on Juliet is sitting up in one of the cafeterias looking outside. And I believe he's noticing the stars. And the W he noticed in the stars is Cassiopeia. Sure is. And I think we can get latitude information about this. That's right. Because we, we can see the circumpolar navigation of Cassiopeia. Mm -hmm. And that looks 30 degrees degrees ish. Which That's means right. So I guess I guess the first the first round we can say is that they're definitely in the northern hemisphere. Because the right. southern That's hemisphere right. can't see this thing at all. Exactly. And then Cassiopeia, I think that the distance from the north the from Polaris to Cassiopeia, I think is like 15 degrees maybe? I think that's right. So 15 degrees about this. This, If you look at the yeah. horizon, it's this mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. Can we can we show it on the mouse here? So we're talking about the, the angular. So this is Polaris. So the Polaris is like the North Pole. That's where the, like the axis in which the Earth spins around. And then the, the degree difference between Polaris and Cassiopeia, which is this cir circumpolar circle here, mm -hmm. is I think it's about 15 degrees. Sounds about right. Yeah. Which means if he can see it at the lowest point near the horizon, that means... Or northern hemisphere at greater than 15 degrees. That's right. And since the camera looks straight out and not up and not anything, I think he's looking straight out. So that means Polaris is visible and so is Cassiopeia. Mm -hmm. So it's near the horizon, mm -hmm. which means oh. it can't be much more than 15 degrees. And it's not dipping below the horizon. Right. So they can't be too far south either. Mm -hmm. So that is northern hemisphere, let's say 15 to 40 degrees. That eliminates not, so somewhere like- Can, can we pick, can, can we pull up a picture of, a, of the earth? Of the what? Of just the earth. Okay, let's Google earth it. I want like the whole, whole globe. I think, I think you can do that. Let's try it. Maps. Or, or even just a picture of the earth. Oh, hold on a second. What, what I'm... Oh, hold on a second. I got this, I got this. There's a layers. And terrain, and I think if I zoom out, yeah. oh nice, oh very nice. Okay, okay. So we're saying that they can't be too far south, otherwise they wouldn't see Cassiopeia, mm -hmm. which is a very northern mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. constellation. Mm -hmm. They can't be too far north because otherwise the they would be looking above them for right. for Cassiopeia. So there's this belt around the Earth right. that they can be in any one of this range. So so something like I don't know, maybe mm, maybe Oregon down to Oklahoma, that's like yeah. this band that they that the right. silo must be existing in. So if the silo is in the United States, this picture is the picture that he's drawing with Cassiopeia is consistent with the United States, but right. does not eliminate some parts of Europe and maybe North Africa. So they could be anywhere along that latitude belt right. anywhere around the world. And I guess they are speaking English, so it could be England, but they don't really have English accents. Right. So I think we're looking at North America. I think that's. Nice touch. It's consistent, right? Seems okay. okay. <laughs> if it wasn't consistent, we made it consistent. Well, I mean, okay. So they they speak English, yeah. And we've decided we can narrow down where they are to this band that is consistent with the U.S. Mm -hmm. There is there any place else on this band in the northern hemisphere that speaks English? I don't think so. Maybe. England, but England's also pretty far north. Pretty far north, right? Yeah, I think I think they wouldn't be looking at the horizon for them to see Cassiopeia. They would be looking much more up. Right, right. That's right. Hmm. Okay. So this guy is—is is this guy going to cause problems for the silo? He's, mm -hmm. he's like doing random research. People are like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? That's but right. then he can start putting pieces together. Maybe figure out the Earth is a sphere. Maybe figure out Earth is rotating. Maybe figure out how the silo sits near the surface. All these different things. And he could blow up the worldview of the pact. Right. Just because this guy has a crush on Juliet and is a science nerd. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. I like it. All just from watching the screens. Like That's right. Incredible amount of information put together. Yeah, absolutely. But if you don't know what you're looking at, it, it's going to take some time to be able to put the pieces together. That's right. And it's not like he was a, like a sailor or whatever. Sailors do this stuff, or at least they used to do all this stuff. Right. But I guess, you know, it took hundreds, a lot of time for sailors to figure out what it all meant. Right. 
and then and then they eventually there's this like training this guy is doing it from scratch so that's right hmm. he's uh going for the win going for the dub okay so the uh juliet's mentor talks about the pact like what the heck is this about there are two big mysteries about the pact. One, we can't mechanize the way we go up and down. No. Okay, so they can't mechanize the way they go up and down. Lifts, no pulleys. No lifts, no pulleys. Okay. Why that, that, I mean, be? that is a question that we've asked before. Like, why wouldn't you put mm -hmm. a pulley? Like, mm -hmm. why, why carry things on people's backs? So this is the answer. The pact says no. The pact says no. So now the question is, why did the pact say no? What's dangerous to social cohesion or silo survivability for pulleys and mechanical elevators what i i'm thinking is maybe you want to keep people's like their their ability to do things very very labor intensive okay. because then that requires the that people dedicate a lot of time to it once i start making pulley systems to get things up and down i don't need those runners to run which means those people are free to do other jobs. And if you get too many people in the silo that are free with their time, then you get civil unrest. Ooh, so you point. make the jobs laborious. So that way people stay engaged with their laborious job. I like that. Also, while you were saying that and talking about keeping people busy, it also stops people from the up high and the people from the down deep from mixing, from, from mixing too much. Right. The down deep people stay down deep and they can go up but but it's painful it's yeah. an entire day's journey like you really need to have a good reason to do it right so it keeps class separation and it keeps people busy that's right and, and not only keep people busy keeps that class separation but it also limits their abilities mm. so like how are we going to carry the size something that's like the mass of a car you know, mm. about two tons four thousand pounds not gonna, right? not gonna happen right but once you start getting pulleys and perhaps even mechanized pulleys like people can start to dream bigger but dreaming Ooh, bigger yeah. is not a stable state for judicial because they want you to like have your set types of stuff that you can think about that they can control once people start dreaming bigger, then like judicial's like, I don't have a rule for what to, how to squelch that. I like it. I like it. So at the surface, it's like, what the fuck? Right. But when maybe we start to think about it, it's like, okay, maybe the social stratification I see it. I see it. and the pulleys are actually connected right. really strongly. There are rules. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, it, yeah, I guess the pact is rules to keep society stable, not necessarily right. growing, not even necessarily like better, good, just stable stable yeah and there's the second part of the pact let's listen two no magnification beyond a certain power so no magnification beyond a certain power why would that be so i thought of magnification in two ways one is for microscopes the other one is telescopes mm -hmm. both of these can be problematic for judicial because if you get telescopes you get people saying like i want to see how far out i can reach mm -hmm. but but you don't want them to reach far out. You want them to stay in the silo. Mm -hmm. mm, for microscopes, maybe I thought I thought perhaps this like the TV that they had, the big screens that they had inside the the um, cafeterias. Maybe for human eyes, it looks nice and smooth. It looks like you know like a real picture. It looks like a like a direct like like a, as if I'm seeing something in the world. But if you were to get really close, if you were to zoom in, maybe you start seeing pixelation. Um, even worse than that. Is, is if you have nice sharp images, say like rocks are nice and sharp, but then they show that tree trunk that, that or the, 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 the tree that doesn't have any leaves. If you were to look closely at that, maybe you see pixelization because it is being edited by the, the IT guy. So that's, that's worse because now you get a mix of some things are blocky, some things are not. And you start thinking like, what, what is going on? What is that? Why is this thing blocky? And now, now it's called into question. So, so you make a pact, you make a pact to say you're not allowed to see things, you're not allowed to zoom in things, zoom into things, you're not allowed to magnify, because that way it keeps your people, keeps the population unable to figure out what's going on. Hmm. Maybe. I also remember, so this uh, Juliet's mentor here was looking at like a camcorder. That's right. And like looking at like the integrated circuits and the tech. And so maybe they don't want people looking too deeply into that. Right. Although... Why is that important? Why would that be important? Because 
It's like, oh, the before times had amazing tech. Like, is that going to ruin social cohesion? I don't know if that would. There'd just be like knickknacks and stuff that people wouldn't know how to manufacture. That's right. Yeah, certainly, certainly we can see it's something amazing, but we're like, I, I don't have the tools to do this. I, we haven't seen anyone that had the tools to do this, to like to like melt metals and stuff for, for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. the, I could see it being a problem because if people can figure out what something is, then they can figure out if what part of it's broken, then they can figure out how to troubleshoot and repair it. If you get people figuring out how to repair things, then you get someone, you, you could get someone that's like, you know what, I'm going to make one. And now you have people manufacturing tech and you're like, you don't want that. You want your population to be controlled, to be limited in what they have available to them, mm -hmm. both, both physically and also mentally. So you're thinking like, they're not gonna be able to manufacture integrated circuits in the silo, right. but they could take broken thing over here, broken thing over here, broken thing over here and learn how to bring them together with magnification and soldering and all kinds of different things and rebuild working technology that has bad info on it, like or, the camcorder. Or, or even, yes, yes, absolutely. Rebuilding or even possibly just, just making new stuff. Like you don't want people innovating because innovating could lead to a situation that judicial doesn't know how to handle. You really want people just locked in and mm. just running the program. So if there is tech, then judicial will know how to run it. Right, they want to grab it up, secure it all. We have all the tech, we run it. Nobody else is allowed nobody to else. Do it. Nobody else, yeah. Or I guess not even judicial, uh, section 31, the janitor's closet might be. That's right. That might, might be, be the only the people. Show. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're the most important. The most important. We put we put things from 100 years ago in bags, <laughs> yeah. labeled them very neatly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Sims. So cool stuff about the pact. Yeah, cool though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So this, this is a little bit skipping ahead. This is where the guy, I forget his name, the... Um, yeah. The criminal dude. He gets thrown Sims. off the edge. He's thrown off the edge by mm -hmm. Sims and he falls all the way down to the bottom. Yep. Why don't they have nets? Yep. Like, we, we this is a catamaran. We put a net there. You can relax on it. And so, uh, like, a net every, one net every, I don't know, five, yeah. ten five, yeah. floors. Like, that would, that would stop people from dying and falling off of the edge. Also, safety is like, oops, I dropped a part. No, no, just the net will catch it. That's it's right. It's not going to, it's not going to fall somebody. all the way down into, if I recall, like, Wilkins fell onto the mesh that was protecting mm -hmm. a fan. Well, what if you drop something and it goes into the fan and now that fan's effed up? Right. Look at this. Look at this. So <laughs> so cute. So comfortable. Yeah. A guy hanging out with little, his little bear watching mm -hmm. TV. Like these um, these nets, like super effective. Mm -hmm. And it would take, you know, it put some resources to manufacturing it, but they seem very capable of doing it. And it seemed That's right. safety, suicide, it, protecting the equipment, like the fans and stuff down below. It seems totally worth it. Every fifth floor, every 10th floor, whatever it is. Why not? Yeah. Instead, but maybe it's a part of the pact. <laughs> maybe it's part of the pact. Like, thou shall not net. <laughs> Sims is like, how am I going to kill people? There's nets. No nets. Sims. Sims. Sims is doing the important job, making sure people don't have nets. <laughs> the other question is, why would a Pez dispenser cause social instability? Like, people know there was the before times. People know things existed in the before times. This is kind of a knickknack. I'm not. I'm not seeing why this is an issue. The only thing I could think of is that if there are like, is there like an ever, like if there's more and more knickknacks coming up, then there are people who are like, oh, there's a source of no, and the people are curious about it. But otherwise, this thing's totally non-functional. Like it's it's really just trinket. Right. I don't know why it would be upsetting. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just everything from the before times is bad. But I can imagine that. Yeah. Like, don't sweat it, right? Who cares? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe this Pez with the duck rises up as like a like a religious symbol. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe that's what happened before before the pact was made. Mm. One of these relics <laughs> became became this was a. Uh, this particular Pez dispenser became the religious symbol of a cult. <laughs> like, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. yeah, very confusing. So that's it. That's episode five. Uh, we got the investigation storyline, mm -hmm. but will we learn about the janitor's closet coming up? Section 31? Yes. Not sure. Will the star guy in the cafeteria be important coming up? We think so. Why were Marnes and Johns killed? We still don't really know. It's kind of mysterious. Um, and what did Wilkins find down in the water 
with the drills and the tunnel and the hard drive. I want to know. I want to know. Hopefully we'll find out. Next time on Silas Season 1, Episode 6. Catch you guys next time.